never fail Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God is never late He's working all things out He's working all things
you, God. His presence is here. His presence is here. 
If you're watching online, His presence is with you right now. The Kingdom of God is like a wedding feast we've all been invited to. And I want you to close your eyes right now and just imagine yourself at the table with Jesus, King Jesus. He satisfies every spiritual hunger that we can have. Every spiritual thirst that you have is satisfied by Jesus. Right now, this morning, if you are in need or in want, would you taste and see that the Lord is good this morning? Taste and see that the Lord is good. That everything that we have need for, we can receive from Jesus this morning. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? How have you come to the table this morning? I hope you come boldly because you have access to the King's table every day. But would you taste and see that the Lord is good? And I wanna take this moment to lift up those within our family that are unwell, that have been sick, that have a need for healing within their body. You can pray, if you're, if you're that person, you can receive it this morning. God, I bring before You Bron Moore. I pray that You would knit her bones together in Jesus' Name and heal her body. Lord God, I pray for Greg Tall. I pray for his body to be cancer free in Jesus' Name. I pray for Jenny Smithers right now for a healing within her body right now in Jesus' Name. Lord God, we ask that You would come upon Alan Jacobson right now in Jesus' Name. Father God, I thank You for Jordan Heath right now, wherever she is, that Your Holy Spirit would fall upon her and she would receive a healing. Lord, anyone I have forgotten, they are not forgotten by You, Jesus. And I pray for those that have needs that are not physical, but You know about it, mental, emotional, financial. You hold the resources in Your hand, God. We come to the table this morning, those that are in need of resources. I pray that resources would be released from heaven in Jesus' Name. I pray for those that are in lack and in need would receive from Jesus this morning. It's the living God, the presence of the living God. We do not take for granted the privilege of sitting at Your table. We do not take for granted the privilege of sitting at Your table, Jesus. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Welcome to church. It is good to have those that are with us in the room, but it's also good to have you. If you're with us online, if you wanna grab your seats, guys. First time in seven weeks, we've had people in the building might feel a bit quieter to those that are here, but this is like a crazy crowd compared to what we've been used to the last <laughs> seven weeks. So it's nice. It's nice to have everybody that can be here. Um, just to let you know that we're going to release uh, registration sort of a week or so in advance to register. But at the 8.30 service, there is a full, there's a full kids program as well so that we can get as many people in the door without a hundred limit. And something that's super exciting is uh, TJ is launching a kids club called Fry Yay on a Friday afternoon. So that's for kids school age uh, from kindergarten to year five, because year five can be in junior youth, I believe. So that's something super exciting because we're aware that the kids haven't been able to gather here on a Sunday and they're probably really feeling it and missing their friends. Um, so that's, God's doing a good thing in our church and we're just thankful. We have more than enough. So we're very thankful and I just spat, but no one's right in front of me, so that's fine. Okay. Thank you, babe. That was kind of boiling water. I chugged, all good. All right. <laughs> if you are taking notes this morning, um, the message is titled, Walk and Build. Walk and Build. Ironically, in on the 23rd of February this year, I 
felt to preach on vision. And now 2020, the year of vision, like everyone's preaching on vision through January, February in churches. And I don't like to do things just for the sake of it. I have to feel that God's asked me to speak it. So it wasn't until the 23rd of February I felt to speak into 2020 vision. But I kind of laugh now because I think, the year, 2020, the year of perfect vision that no one saw coming. You know, the year of clarity that's thrown everyone for six. And it's quite ironic, we're all talking about having this perfect vision and then it's been nothing of what any of us could have seen coming this year. But I spoke about the year of focus, the year of perfect clarity, that when your eyes are worth working well, they work in the nearsighted and the, and the give me the, ter- the terminology, Brie. Far, well, that doesn't sound very technical, near and far. Um, Long distance, you know, close up, that the best human eyeball leaves the best lenses for dead when it's working perfectly, the clarity that it sees. Um, we all, the, those two perspectives are really important for us to succeed in life, but even more so is clarity of spiritual vision, seeing what's happening in the now and what's to come, having perfect vision for what God is doing now and in the future, for us being one step ahead of our opponent, the devil, for us knowing what God is doing in the now and the vision for the future, seeing things clearly being ahead of our game. You know, long distance vision for what God's doing. Oh, Jordan, you're here. God bless you. I prayed for you like you're at home. Receive it. Um, That when we have distance vision, it actually births hope and faith in our hearts. Distance vision keeps hope alive. How to see things perfectly. You know, I spoke, I spoke that day on Jesus' vision, His perfect vision. He was there at creation. So Jesus was there when God created the world. But when He was here on earth, He had perfect vision for what was happening in the moment. Think about it. He walked past, He saw Zacchaeus in the tree and He could see what was happening in His heart. Jesus had perfect vision for the individual, the one. But not only that, it says in the Bible that He always saw the cross. He knew what was coming. He saw the cross and He saw the resurrection. He knew that He would one day rise again. He saw the whole perspective. And sometimes I think if I was Jesus, I'd get impatient thinking about the resurrection and I'd almost maybe lose sight of the one. But it gives us an insight into how we can have vision for the now, for the today, the individual and the one, but also to see what God is doing for the future. Jesus saw what other people didn't see and that's what we're called to have this 2020 vision like Jesus. God has had a plan. Jesus fulfilled the plan. And in tw- on 23rd of February, when we talk about the beginning of the year, and often we come with our own plans and agendas and we ask God to bless it. But on the 23rd of February, I said, it's not about our plan and our vision for God to jump on board with. He's actually got a vision and a plan and He's wanting us to jump on board with His vision and His plan. So today I'm gonna preach out of a prophetic picture that Felix had a couple of weeks ago at our Tuesday morning prayer meeting. He would be free to share it, but you, you want to? You want to share it? No, got you on the spot. You want to? Yeah, Felix, you can take the mask off, Yuri. Um, Just a couple of weeks ago when we were praying, God gave me this this picture of, you know, Noah and, and the ark. And I just saw this massive kind of ark, this huge boat, but it was in the middle of nowhere. It was in the deserted kind of island where the land was cracked and it was very dry. And, you know, and I was thinking, God, what are you trying to say? You know, what are you trying to say through, through this picture? And, you know, and I felt God saying, you know, Noah built that ark when everything was dry. When people thought, you know, what the heck are you doing, Noah? You know, there's no rain, there's no forecast of rain but he just built because he trusted God and that's what God told him to do. And I felt God saying, you know, it's time to build now. It's time to build now. Don't wait for the flood because when the flood comes, when the rain comes, it's too late, you know? You gotta build, 
you know, now when, when it's dry, in obedience to God. And so when the flood comes, we're ready. The boat will float. And that was the picture. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Felix. Um, so that's, God really spoke to me through that picture, and that's what I want to speak to you guys today, about lessons from the life of Noah, walk and build. But Jesus actually harked back to the days of Noah in Matthew 24, and over three chapters of 23, 24, 25, Jesus is talking about the end times, and He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. He uses parables, and He uses real life, actual events that are going, going to come to prepare people to be awake to what God is doing. And there's so much I could say about it, but this is just, I wanna pick this one particular verse this morning to focus in on. In Matthew 24, 32, Jesus is speaking um, about actual events that will take place at end times and how we will know when they take place that the end is coming near. And following that in Matthew 24, 32, it says, now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you will know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things, you can know His return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one will know the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son Himself, only the Father knows. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in the days of Noah. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying their banquets, their parties, their weddings, right up till the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realise what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, another will be left behind. Two women will be grinding flour in the mill. One will be taken, another will be left behind. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know what day the Lord is coming. Understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. You also must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least expected. What's extraordinary about those three scripture, those three chapters in Matthew 23, 24 and 25, it does say there's gonna be signs that we'll be able to read and know. But the overarching message is about how we're to live no matter what. Not knowing when we don't know what the day or the hour Jesus will return, how we are to live. It's talking about the days of Noah. We often, if you're familiar with the story, you think about it being an incredibly wicked day and the people were very wicked. But Jesus is referring to it about those people being asleep to what God is doing, unaware to what was coming. And I believe that's the message for us to hear this morning, for us to be awake to what God is doing now and for what is to come that we should not be like the people in the days of Noah, going about our business, busy, busy in our business and unaware of what's coming. Aware of what God is doing, awake. Jesus goes on to tell the parable of the 10 virgins, which I'm not gonna speak about this morning, but the five that were ready and the five that were unprepared for Jesus' return. But not all of them were asleep in that day. Noah was awake to what God was doing. Noah was aware of what God was doing. He found himself in the hall of faith in Hebrews eleven seven. By faith, with confidence in God, his word, Noah being warned by God of the events not yet seen. He was warned by God about what was coming. It wasn't seen and he prepared an ark for salvation of his family. By this act of obedience, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which comes by faith. I wanna pull out some things about characteristics of Noah in his day because Jesus says, don't be like the people in the days of Noah, but I believe we've been called to be Noahs in our generation. So I wanna jump back to Genesis. I'm gonna read from the message translation. I don't wanna assume that you know it super well, but it's a great um, read if you wanna go back and read the whole 
story of Noah, but we'll go to Genesis 6, 5 to 10 in the message, Noah and his sons. God saw that the human evil was out of control. Does anyone feel like that sometimes <laughs> today? I mean, it's been a pretty rough week online um, about this generation. They thought evil, they imagined evil, 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 evil from morning to night. And God was sorry He made the human race in the first place. It broke His heart. And God said, I will get, I'll get rid of my ruined creation and make a clean sweep of people, animals, snakes. Should have left the snakes off the boat. Bugs, also them, mosquitoes particularly, should not have lived beyond the flood. Um, the works, I'm sorry I made them, but Noah was different. God liked what he saw. This is the story of Noah. He was a good man, a man of integrity in his community. Noah walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Japheth. In the Amplified Translation, it said he habitually walked with God. Noah walked with God. We are called to walk with God. It says that Adam and Eve would walk with God in the cool of the afternoon. He, you have been created to walk with God. Enoch walked with God and God took him because he loved his relationship with Enoch so much. We have been called to walk with God. But do you know what happens when you walk with God? It gives you clear vision. Sorry, I'm eating my hair. Walking with God gives you clear vision. He was different. You have been called to be different, set apart. We see different as a bad thing so often. We're so desperate to fit in. We're so desperate to not stand out. We're doing things to try to fit in. But Romans 12, which I preached a few weeks ago, says don't fit in with your culture so much that you fit in without noticing. We've actually been called to be different. To be different, but different's not a bad thing. Caleb had a different spirit. It says of Caleb, when they went and saw the promised land, the, ten, uh, the others, they saw giants, they saw challenges, they saw obstacles, but Caleb had a different spirit. He saw promise and he saw calling. Different is good. You have been called to be different, set apart. In this insanely wicked generation, think about how bad it was that God's heart was so grieved that he thought, I'm gonna have to start again. But Noah was different in that generation. He was set apart. Noah, in, a, in an insanely wicked, chaotic day, he had peace, he had confidence, he had hope, and he had integrity. You have been called to be set apart and to be different. It is possible to be different, to have integrity, to have hope and peace in a wicked generation. What is common? Fear and anxiety. But to be different to the common is hope, peace and faith. What is common is apathy, selfishness, but to be different is to be passionate and generous. We have been called to be set apart and different in a good way. And your difference is a blessing. Your difference brings hope. Your difference brings freedom. Noah walked with God and God let Noah in on what was happening. And I'm gonna read again, jump into Genesis. I'm not gonna read the whole of this, I'm gonna jump through, um, but it just gives you a snapshot. So God says to Noah in Genesis 6, 13, He says, I intend to make an end of all the, that lives for through men um, the land is filled with violence and behold, I'm about to destroy them together with the land. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make it like this, this many cubits. This, make it this long. Make it with bitumen on the outside and on the inside, he says. He gives him specific detail about the door and the window and how to build it. He tells him to take two of every kind of animal and that he will take his whole family on there. And at the very end of that chunk of Scripture says, so Noah did this according to all that God had commanded him. That is what he did. God-given blueprint, a blueprint from heaven. Noah walked with God 
and God gave him a blueprint from heaven. But if you're sitting in this room today and you're aware of anything to do with the Bible, we know that the salvation message comes through Jesus, that salvation can only come through Jesus. We know that God preserved Noah's family because his story wasn't over and that the story would continue to go, that Jesus would come so that we could all be saved through Him. So salvation comes through Jesus and we've been called to walk with God. And I know that I know that I know if I was to walk out of this building and be hit by a bus, I know I go straight into the presence of God. I have eternal life, I am saved. So is that it for my story? I, no, I believe we've been called to walk with God and to build what He has called us to build. Because though Jesus is the mode of salvation, we have been called to build an ark. Just like Felix said, we have been called to build an ark, but the ark is called the church, His body. But it's a family and there's a specific blueprint from heaven. There's a blueprint from heaven we've been given. Build like this, build like this. It's interesting in Genesis, the whole way through Genesis, it doesn't actually talk about Noah preaching, but in 2 Peter, it refers to Noah as a preacher, that he actually preached to his generation. But I think about Noah building the ark and it's debatable how long it took for him to build, 120 years, 100 years, that's a long time. He is building and his neighbours are walking past. You know, whenever we're doing, Felix is always fixing the grass. He's, got, he's a man of great faith. He's always trying to revive the dead grass on our front lawn. Um, I say, just let it go, man. I'm over you trying to fix the grass. But people walk past Felix fixing the grass. They talk to him, what are you doing? Noah's neighbours would have said, what are you building? What are you building and why are you building it? And then Noah would have told them, about God said a flood is coming and that's why I'm building. They had an opportunity to build their own ark. They had an opportunity to hear the message of what was to come. Your life is called to build the Kingdom of God. We are called to build alongside what God is building. And when we're building, people will ask us, why are you building that? Why do you go to church on a Sunday? Now you're allowed to come. <laughs> Why do you teach Scripture? Why do you volunteer? Why do you build your life like that? Why do you pray and read your Bible? And in 1 Peter 3.15 it says, but in your heart set, your, set Christ apart as holy. Acknowledge Him and give Him first place in our lives. Always be ready to give a logical defence to anyone who asks you account for the hope and confident assurance you have by faith. It's within you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. I love that. Do it with gentleness and respect. No Bible bashing, please. <laughs> be kind, be loving, but be ready that when someone asks, why do you build? What, what about your faith? Why are you not freaking out about the pandemic? You have just lost your job, but why are you not seeming like the most anxious person? But be ready to give an account of the faith that you have. Be ready to give an account because though our generation and our story is different, we are still, we are actually, the ark we're building is more significant because it wasn't just one family now that makes it on the ark. We have been called to reach this whole generation. We have been called to be awake, to be building so that all will be saved. That is God's desire. He has given us a picture of what to build and how to build it. Build like this. Just like Noah, it was a bit out there. And sometimes building church feels a bit out there. It's unusual. It's gonna seem strange to those who don't understand what's coming. Building the ark was unusual for those who had no revelation of rain or a flood. Building church seems unusual for those who have no res revelation that Jesus is coming again. That one day you will breathe your last breath and what will happen when you die? What happens at the end of your life? We know that Jesus died so we can have eternal life with Him. We have a revelation, that's why we build. I have a revelation of what's to come, so I build. I build so that other people can know about what's to come. But this blueprint He's given us is family. A blueprint that is family. Ephesians 2 speaks of building. 
in the message translation, this is one of my favourite scriptures at the moment. I use this a lot. It says, it's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. The kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or outsiders. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. God is building a home and He's using all of us irrespective of how we got here. He's using the apostles and prophets for the foundation, but now He's using you, built in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone, holds it all together. We see it taking shape day after day, a holy temple built by God, all of us built into the temple in which God is quite at home. We've been called to walk with Jesus but to build His church with Him and we are a part of the building. It's not about Felix and Lou building the church with the staff and you attend. No, you're a part of the building. You're being built in and we're all called to build that up together. Build daily for eternity. Build daily for eternity. We have this prophetic promise, but we can't be like the people in the days of Noah. They were busy in their business. They were just busy having parties, going about their business. They didn't even, when the flood came, they were unaware, unprepared. I believe that the whole of those few chapters in Matthew is waking us up, be awake, don't be asleep. It's so easy to be asleep in the West. It's easy to be a Christian that is asleep to what God is doing. You have been called to build and God has given you a blueprint from heaven. When we walk with God, we hear from Him how to build. Build like this. You know, COVID has caused many people to reorder their lives, reorder their lives in priority. How am I gonna schedule my life now? What am I gonna pull back from? What am I gonna have more from, more of? I just pray you haven't reordered God out of your life. <laughs> I pray that when it comes to ordering our lives, we haven't put Him at the bottom. Because when we walk with God, we get a vision from heaven. We realise God's doing something in my life today and Jesus is gonna come back one day. And if not my generation, but if in my generation, I wanna be ready. I wanna be a part of the church that is awake to what He is doing. What about the detail? Sometimes people think that church should be so free range chicken that just no plan, but God's detail with the ark, build that, He was so specific. It's like Felix, architecture specific. <laughs> and what if Noah said, all right, God, I'll build an ark, but I'll build it my way. I'll build off my own plan. I'll build it the way I wanna build it. It would have sunk. God knew how it must be built because He knew what that was coming. He's given us specific instructions on how to build His church, His family. God is a God of detail, not chaos. When He created the world, He actually brought order out of chaos. He put limitations on the chaotic seas. He brought order and seasons. Hebrews 11, 7, by faith and with confidence in God and His Word. That's how you've been called to live, with faith and in confidence in God and His Word, with knowing what's coming, He built and was obedient to what God had called Him. I wanna read you a prophetic word. When, when Felix shared about his pitch, I instantly remembered there's a, a pastor's wife who does art, prophetic art, and I follow her on Instagram. And in January, she posted a prophetic word about Noah. So when Felix shared that, I thought I've read something about Noah this year that really stirred my heart when I read it. And I wanna read it to you this morning. She had multiple dreams about Noah and this is how she penned what God has called her, called her to share. She says, where are the Noahs of this generation? The obedient ones, ready to obey God's prophetic instruction, even when it arrives at an obscure time. They're not aligned to the current cultural custom. Where are the willing ones, the faith-filled, courageous ones, willing to start, build on an ark among a town of tent dwellers? Where are the future-sighted ones? willing to build something that no one understands because God said rain is coming. The ones willing to pioneer with great preparation of a heavenly Word. 
the ones willing to build despite the voices and the critics? Where are the devoted ones, the obedient few, the trusting ones who move out of a God nudge, even when they have no reference point of rain? Where are the ones willing to look ridiculous and swim upstream? The ones being okay to be an outcast called a misfit for the Kingdom calling? Where are the bold as lions ones with tenacious faith? The strong ones able to walk a road never travelled. Where are the Noahs? Rise up, Noah. Wake your soul. It's time to build. This morning, you didn't just come and attend church. You have attended your wake up call. 13th of September 2020, this is your wake up call. You know, you start, you go to a hotel, you organise a wake up call, you get the call. Hello, this is your 7am wake up call. This is your soul's wake up call. It's time to wake up. It's time to start building. It's time to walk with God. It's time to get the blueprint from heaven. We don't wanna be a part of the generation that's asleep and miss what God is doing. We have been called to build now. It's time to wake up. I don't know if you've seen the news this past week, but I was really impacted by a story that I saw. There's a, I, I believe it's like a, a sheep ship, a, sh- a, a ship full of cattle or livestock, livestock that actually sunk off the coast of Japan. And of that crew, some of them have been rescued, but the ones that are still missing, there's two Australians missing still and 40 um, that are from another nation. And I was watching the ABC News and the best friend of one of the guys missing made his way to ABC News. And he is pleading with the Australian government. He says, keep looking because you can survive for 30 days and there's two rafts missing and they could be on those rafts. And out of the hope of the fact that they could be on the raft and that they can survive 30 days and out of knowing that fact, we need to keep looking. And these families have petitioned. You could see the heartache in this guy, this young guy's face where it had just cost him so much to just even get on the news that when he got on the news and tried to plead their story, tears came to his eyes. He was desperate at the hope that they could be saved, the hope they could still survive. And God spoke to me about how I am to feel for my friends that don't know Jesus and the desperation of this young man to say if they just could be saved and it's worth us moving heaven and earth to find them. Wake up, soul. How do you feel about those that don't know Jesus? Or are you thinking, well, I'm on the ark and I feel quite fine about dying. So I'll just go about my business feeling comfortable. Or is there a stirring and a hunger in your soul and a desperation for those that don't know Him? That's how we're to be as the church in this generation. Wake up soul, be awake to what God is doing. And it's in the simple and in the day to day Just this week, I just began to stir my heart before I went and met with a friend who doesn't know Jesus. And I said, God, give me an opportunity and I'll be ready. Speak to me and I'll be ready to share. As soon as I sat down, God opened that door. Why don't you turn up the temperature in your prayer life for the day to day, build daily for eternity, but have the vision that Jesus is coming. But if He comes back in my generation, I'll be awake and I'll be ready. And I'll be glad that I built because I wonder how Noah would have felt if he'd given up building. How would you feel the flood comes and you're like, ah, I knew it quick, it's too late. We don't wanna be building when it's too late. We build now, be ready. Turn up the temperature in your prayer life. Walk and build. And as you're walking with God and as you're building how He called you to build, people will ask you why. And be ready to share your faith and hope and offer them the invitation that you are building for them, not for ourselves. We exist for those that don't know Jesus. I'm gonna finish in prayer now that I've given you your wake up call and I'm gonna give a salvation call. But as I give this salvation call this morning, I know that you have people in your heart that don't know Jesus. 
And how about we get desperate this morning, church? How about we get like that young man that was just like, if we look, I'm sure we will find them. How about we start praying like we really care and get hungry and desperate to see a generation come to know Jesus? Because just being positive doesn't mean peanuts. It ain't mean nothing when you just think, oh, I'll just be positive. It gets you halfway up a mountain. But the peace of God that surpasses all understanding that I know that I know, that at the end of my life, I'm gonna go straight in the presence of God. That will carry me through. How about we close our eyes and pray right now. And maybe you're at home, you're listening and you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're in this room and you know you need to get your life right with Jesus that God has spoken to you and your wake up call has come and you think, I know I'm away from God. I know that He is calling me. The Bible says that salvation is so close. It's like the breath in our lungs. It's as close as the the tongue in our mouth that we just confess that Jesus is Lord and Saviour. We don't need to build an ark for us to be saved. We just accept that what Jesus did on the cross was enough and we are completely forgiven. In Jesus' Name, if that's you this morning and you need to respond, I would encourage you to reach out to us as a church if you're at home, but I'm gonna pray a prayer. And if in your heart you pray that this morning, I want you to let us know. But as you are praying for those that you're believing to come to know Jesus, I want you to just engage with God and just pray on their behalf right now. Dear Jesus, I'm sorry for how I've been away from You. Lord, I've been living my own way and I wanna get my heart right with You, Jesus. I accept Your salvation. Come into my heart, make me brand new. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen, if you prayed that prayer, we just would love for You to reach out to us and we would love to pray for You. But I'm just gonna pray right now that we would be a church that is awake to what You are doing, God. That we would have vision for what You are doing today and that we would see what You are doing in our church, in our community and beyond. That we would be awake to Your plans and purposes, God, and we would be building according to Your heaven's blueprints for Your church, Jesus. God, I thank You for every precious person under the sound of my voice in this room and online. I pray that You would just be tangible in their life today. Speak to them. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to play church news and we'll see you next week or a part of our Connect groups. Bless you. Thanks for watching East Coast Online. From wherever or whenever you are watching, we pray you were blessed by the service. Connect groups are not just another program or ministry. They are the heart of East Coast. If you want to join a Connect group, head to eastcoast.org.au forward slash connect. Check out our East Coast Church podcast, which is available on our website as well as Spotify and Apple Podcast. If you would like prayer, send us your prayer request on the website. Fill out a form and we'll make sure our team is praying for you. Hey kids, be sure to check out our exciting Coast Kids curriculum. You'll be able to access this every week for new lesson videos and worship action songs. To find this content, head to our website, eastcoast.org.au forward slash kids. East Coast Youth has some exciting things happening. Be sure to check out our website, eastcoast.org.au forward slash youth about location and meeting times. Follow our Facebook and Instagram page to get weekly updates. There are two simple ways you can give, via the East Coast website or by direct transfer. In this season, we continue to build the Kingdom of God and as a faith community, we remain blessed to be a blessing. We know that these are really challenging times and while we are realistic that we can't do everything, we know that we can do something. We want to be able to extend our Coast Care arm to reach out not only to our church community, but also to our local community. If there are needs you become aware of, or if you want to get involved and help, please contact admin at eastcoast.org.au. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and Apple podcast and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. 
We encourage you to engage by commenting and sharing our content, as well as tagging us in what your Sundays look like at home so we can stay connected online. Thanks for joining us at East Coast. Have a wonderful week.